Welcome to Sculpture Studios. Originating from Greek mythology, with countless references in text, imagery and film adaptations, the idea or figure of Medusa remains as one of the most iconic characters from Greek culture's storytelling history. Said to be one of three sisters, and one that got a little bit too frisky with old Poseidon in Athena's temple, Medusa was cursed, so her hair and body were transformed into serpents, and anyone that gazed upon her eyes would be turned to stone. I guess in some ways a statue of Medusa herself seems almost ironic, but artist Fiona Jackson from her company called Polyfields here in the UK thought that this would be a fantastic figure to represent her work at the 2015 Chelsea Flower Show. Fiona found us on the net, and after having a look through our portfolio and other project videos online, she thought we would be the best people to come to to tailor make her sculpture. She sent us a few concept images and a chosen final design to be made nine feet tall. We took a look at Fiona's previous work and how her form of art incorporates intricate seashell decorations, transforming her sculptures with the textured theming. Fiona also mentioned how she liked the thought of our online videos and how it would be a great idea to have some sort of teaser trailer that she could share to give the public a glimpse of the up and coming sculpture. Now that the flower show has been and gone, this video shows the entire process from concept to completion. We begin by confirming design choices with Fiona, everything from the volume of hair and number of snakes to her body shape and overall curvature all need to be decided before we start. As you saw from the images at the beginning of the video, there are many different styles and interpretations as to what Medusa might look like, so we collaborated all these ideas with Fiona. Now Medusa has been described to have once been beautiful and then transformed into a gorgon, other references suggest she remains beautiful, and some say she was quite monstrous all along. Regardless, in the majority of references we found her to be somewhat of a warrior, or at least a menacing figure, usually adopting a bow and quiver. So Aiden's creating her with quite an Amazon woman masculine look. Not only does Clay allow for more detail than polystyrene, but it's much easier to make any changes when the client sees the work. So far the face and the hair underneath the snakes is being carved from clay, the snakes themselves are being carved from polystyrene, and so is the base section that was around Medusa. This base is being made as a regular octagon shape, 8 feet in diameter, and will double up as a pond, as Fiona intended for this sculpture to be used as a water feature. As usual we're going over all the polystyrene with a sticky back foil to protect the foam from the resin burning through. We've also triple layered the fiberglass on the inside of the base so it's completely watertight and gone on with a smoother gel coat layer where the water's actually going to sit. Sketching the dimensions of the body now, Aidan maps the figure out and then stands it up and takes the large bulk sections away using a hot wire. Removing the material this quickly is one of those times where you've got to be a little bit brave with what you're taking off, but confident in that you understand the form you're trying to achieve. Aidan then carves using nail and wire brushes, following the concept image at all times, as it's important to stay true to the original brief. Once he's happy with the form, the surface is then sanded down using sandpaper to lose that rough polystyrene bead texture. Here you can see we've labelled all the snakes for the hair, so we can take them off to work on the clay section below, and still know they're in their designated positions when it comes to putting them back on. We're hand modelling the snake head from plasticine, and creating a silicon rubber mould to retain the detail. We then reshape the snake head, opening the mouth and repeating this a few times, so we end up with three moulds for three snake heads with mouths in different positions. We always like to go above and beyond with our work, and at this stage, as we're not quite sure how many shells or to what extent Fiona's going to cover Medusa in, we're deciding to make the piece as detailed as possible. This is so she has the option to leave various parts of the sculpture shell free if she wishes, and the areas she leaves bare are still going to be highly detailed. We're also carving each hand from clay, as this is a more suitable medium for the level of detail we're after than if we were carving from polystyrene, and we create a silicon mould for each of these as well. The casts for both the hands and the snake heads are made from a two-part plastic, and they're then cleaned up to remove any excess material. At 
this stage, when we're happy that we've got as far as we can through the process, before any fiberglass is applied to the body or head, we invite the client down to the studio. Fiona visited along with her husband Jay to see the sculpture for the first time in 3D. It's great to get a client's input and discuss any changes that need to be made at this stage, as it would be very difficult to make any alterations later in the process. For the face, Fiona said she wanted a more attractive, more Angelina Jolie type look, so here you can see Aidan's made these amendments, and she's asked us to look into glass eyes for the snakes. Fiona is very much the visionary out of the two, using her creative ideas to get the project started, and envisaging the final outcome. Jay's very much the more practically minded, dealing with everything from logistics and transport, to the construction, plumbing and electrical side of the project. He makes sure that everything happens, and the project itself is actually physically doable. It's always better talking to a client in person, rather than just through emails or over the phone, so you can really get a feel for what they're after, and be completely on the same page. It's also good to have a client that's passionate about the project, really likes to be involved, and wants to be hands-on with the work. Aidan's talking Fiona and Jay through the base section, where they said they'd like plumbing to be installed later on, and a pipe that needs to go all the way up through the body to accommodate the water flow. It's important that this is sorted out at this stage, before any glass fibre work takes place on Medusa herself. We begin the artwork on the snakeheads, building up in theatrical layers to get into all the detail. When we started crafting Medusa's bow, we did a little research on appropriate bow length in proportion to a person's height and arm span, and with the scaling up of her larger than life body, her bow worked out to be approximately 1.3 meters from end to end. To save Medusa getting lost in the depth of the pond base, Fiona requested that she be raised by another foot to lift her out of the water, and this will give her more presence. This was another benefit of coming down to the studio, so she could see it for herself and make these kind of decisions. We're using general purpose resin for this sculpture, as it's going to be going outside, and we're giving it a medium build-up of glass fibre. As this shouldn't be knocked too much, and with the polystyrene inside to help retain the strength, this will be nice and durable for long-term outdoor use, and will be resistant to the weather. Using a compilation of various designs from the internet, we're collaborating all the references we found, and creating our own snake bow look. We're using a PU expanding foam to carve from initially, and this is then sanded down, foiled, and laminated with glass fibre. We're adding armour to her chest and shoulders, and we're including extra details to help contribute to the overall theme of the sculpture. This is all then given a bronze look finish, just to add a bit of weight and gravitas. All the snake heads you can see here have had wires moulded into the back, and this way we can put them on the sculpture, and retweak them to where we think they look the most aesthetically pleasing. Once we're happy with the positioning, they're then laminated on. After a bit of hunting around looking for cabuchons, which were effectively glass or perspex hemispheres for the eyes, we had some custom made from glass to fit the heads perfectly. These are then painted from the back to give each eye a crystal orb look. For Medusa's face, we had a professional makeup artist come in to apply details that would be waterproof for outdoor environments and the general fountain use of the sculpture. To make sure that everything stays in place, and A doesn't start moving around or floating in the water, and B can't be knocked by the public or blown over by the wind, we're lifting Medusa up to install some metal brackets on the inside. This way she can be bolted down into the base, and everything stays nice and secure. As we're still not sure how Fiona's going to decorate this, we're adding a few more smaller details that really help finish the piece off. Once our part of the work is done, we have her picked up from our studio here in Essex, and delivered to Fiona's Polyfield studio in Devon. At this point Medusa's out of our hands, and it's up to Fiona to work her art on the figure. When it comes to taking Medusa to the Chelsea Flower Show, we've created a sign for Fiona to present next to the sculpture. This is really to introduce the piece, and to hold some business cards to promote the company and her range of work. We've created this to be in keeping with the same style and theme as Medusa's bow and armour. 
We also made Fiona a couple of our swans that you can find on our website, and these, along with a pig, a stag, and various other garden ornaments, were also decorated with shells in the same fashion. After several months of work from us, and a painstaking amount of work from Fiona's team, with getting the sculpture covered in shells, here Medusa is now in all her glory. One of the beautiful things about art is it always provides a talking point, and an opportunity for the merging and expression of different opinions. With an eye-catching piece like this at the show, it certainly wasn't one that you could easily miss, and we hope it was well received by the public. Fiona was kind enough to arrange for Aidan to go up to the show and visit for the day, to see the sculpture in the public domain, receiving the audience it was created for. We'd like to thank Fiona and Jay Jackson for their hard work throughout the process, and we look forward to more projects in the future. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.